So as we learn more about light, what we really want to understand is optics, that is the control of light. That's a very important function of a luminaire or any lighting instrument. In fact, the five purposes of a luminaire is to protect and hold the lamp, to provide a safe electrical connection, to allow uh, for an installation that is appropriate for the, for the uh, architectural uh, details, to enhance the aesthetic or the look, and lastly, to control the light. And to control the light, there's really two aspects of controlling the light that optics are concerned with. That is delivering the light where you want it to go, but also impacting the overall appearance as you look at a lighting instrument. That is, to control glare and to provide shielding so that we can reduce the brightness and provide for visual comfort. There are two basic physical principles that are important in doing this. They are reflection and refraction. Let's take a look at them. So when we take a look at refraction and reflection, it's important to isolate the component of light into basically uh, an individual ray. I'm going to use this device, which is currently showing you an entire uh, abundance of arrays of light in all directions. I'm going to isolate that basically to one single ray so we can talk about light. Our first physical principle is reflection. The important thing about reflection is that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflectance. And once I understand that principle, all I have to do is to adjust the contour of the reflecting body, and I can shape that to actually change the direction in which light travels. Reflection tells us that the angle of incidence, that is the angle at which light comes into a surface, is equal to the angle of reflectance when I have a highly polished or specular surface. When I have a more diffuse surface, in fact, I get less specific reflections off of that surface uh, and much more difficult, therefore, to control. The second principle is refraction. I'm going to use prisms to describe the principle of refraction. And when I take a prism, which is an optical solid of unparalleled surfaces, and introduce it into the path of the light, well, obviously, I bend the path at which light follows. This particular prism is only about 15 degrees, so it doesn't bend the light nearly as much as a prism that is, say, 45 degrees. When I introduce that into the path, it bends the light even more. Interesting thing about this, is, although we consider this a refractor, when I have a prism that's 45 degrees, I can also count on it for total internal reflection. And in this case, when the light hits the surface at 45 degrees or more, it actually reflects across and reflects back up the other direction, and that is a total internal reflection. This refractor is used uh, in internal reflection property on industrial fixtures, as we'll see in just a moment. So when it comes to reflection, we saw that the contour of the shape is going to impact where light goes. So we talk about a light source, the contour of the shape is going to determine whether that is a spot or a flood source and whether we're looking for very soft diffuse type reflections or whether we're looking for very specific shiny or specular type reflections. Uh, when I introduce a light source into that reflector then, I actually start to put into focus exactly where the light needs to go. This is part of the control mechanism. We can do that on a much larger scale such as with an industrial fixture, as we see here. And again, the contour of the metal is going to determine what direction the light goes and whether it is specular or diffuse. When we saw refraction, we saw a 45 degree prism being used. And the ribs on this particular industrial refractor are actually just a series of 45 degree prisms that are contoured in shape in order to deliver the light where we want it to go. We do the same thing when we talk about LED sources, although the reflectors that are actually in the source are much smaller devices and actually built into the actual lens of the luminaire itself, such that the reflectors marry and come into focus with the light making elements to project the light where we want it to go. In a luminaire, be it a downlight, same principles apply. We use a highly specular uh, material for the reflector itself, and the contour of that is going to determine in what direction the light is delivered for the application. So the point of this optics is to capture light from the light source and deliver it where you want it to go. This is an electronic candle, basically a flashlight without a reflector on it, and the light is going in all directions. But the moment I place a reflector there, I capture that illumination. 
So in order to effectively capture this light, the light source needs to be one-fifth of the size of the optical element. That's a rule of thumb. So with a LED, a very small reflector can capture that light. With a halogen, the, el the filament inside is still relatively small, and I can place that into a large reflector and capture all that illumination very, very effectively. It becomes very questionable whether when I start taking sources like a compact fluorescent and placing them into a reflector, whether I can properly capture the light. I'm obviously blocking the light from going where I don't want it to go, but I'm not necessarily making an efficient collection of that illumination because this would have to be five times the size of that to capture it, or about three times larger. And that doesn't make sense in many architectural environments. We said there were two parts to optical control, the other is controlling brightness. This source is obviously tremendously bright, but by using lenses in front of it, we can actually spread that brightness over a greater area and increasing its comfort. Therefore, we have two things in optical control, putting the light where we want it to go and controlling its visual comfort.